Today on Upfront, campaign countdown, the big midterm election just 17 days away. Today, how the candidates in the top races are positioned heading into the home stretch. We'll have insight and analysis from John Nichols of the Capital Times and conservative commentator Michelle Litchens. Plus, getting out the vote in Milwaukee's Central City, the innovative program that has politicians listening, not talking. Covering the issues important to Wisconsin. This is Upfront with Mike Goucher. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Upfront. The midterm election is now a little more than two weeks away, and the campaigns are heading into the home stretch. The race for governor, Republican incumbent Scott Walker versus the Democratic challenger, state school superintendent Tony Evers, remains a toss up in the eyes of most observers and in the eyes of the campaigns. The race for U.S. Senate, Democratic incumbent Tammy Baldwin versus Republican State Senator Leah Vukmir has seen Baldwin leading in the polls, but with Vukmir still campaigning hard. We're taking stock of the big 2018 races with our political panel today, former state lawmaker turned political commentator Michelle Litchens and John Nichols, associate editor of the Capital Times and correspondent for The Nation. Thanks to both of you for being with us today. Thank you. So Scott Walker's trying to hang on. He's trying to win a third term, Michelle Litchens. What will it take for him to do that? I actually think he's on his way to having that happen again this time. He's always been fighting just around 50%. Uh, he started off the campaign trying to define who Tony Evers was, and then he started to say, oh, this is what I've done. I've held the line on property taxes for years. We've held the line on college tuition, and that wasn't moving the needle as much. So now you see him changing that to Tony Evers is going to raise your taxes, and I think that's actually what's going to help you You think over the that message, line. that focus, that, that Tony Evers, we don't know what he's going to do. We don't, other taxes. than that he's you going to raise resonating. school funding by $1.9 billion. He's going to get rid of the egg and manufacturer tax credit. He is going to lift the levy on your property tax. Um, and your property tax limit. So I do think that that's an issue that resonates with people because they, they, you know, think about it. During the Doyle administration, people were not willing to to uh, approve school referendums because their property taxes were so high. So now that we've been able to hold the line on property taxes and spending at the state level, people are willing to spend more money on schools, but they do not want their, their taxes to go up. John Nichols, 17 days left. What does Tony Evers have to do to win? Well, I think he has to keep doing what he's doing. Look, uh, he's, run a, he's run a very successful campaign so far. Nobody's gotten anywhere near this close to Scott Walker. When you go back and look at the polls from 2010, 2012, and 2014, Scott Walker was always up in, in those polls. I, I mean, and often, by this point, doing pretty well. Uh, never had a huge lead, but a solid place. Evers has, has gotten himself into a good position. In part, that is because Scott Walker's running against his own past in this campaign. It's a fascinating thing that Walker's trying to do. He is a, probably the ablest conservative politician this state has ever seen. And, and he knows that, that in the first term of a new president, this state usually votes for the other party. You know, Reagan comes in, you have a Democratic sweep. Bush comes in, you have a Democratic sweep. Obama comes in, you have a Republican sweep. There is that nature of the state. So he has tried to adjust himself. He's running as the education governor. He's running as a criminal justice reform governor. He's running as the health care, going to take care of your pre-existing condition governor. In fact, I, am, I don't know at what point whether he'll actually appear with Bernie Sanders when Bernie Sanders is in Kenosha uh, this coming week, but, but he certainly put himself, you know, he's trying very, very hard to get himself over there. The thing is, though, as Michelle pointed out, he's always been in that 50 51 percent range. I don't think that it works this time, and I think that is where Evers, if he continues where he's at and actually just stays genuine, he's got, he has a real chance here. So I think the other thing that we're seeing happen now is that whole Kavanaugh effect. Yeah. I think it comes down to that mob mentality that we went through in the state of Wisconsin in 2011 and 2012. We had people come out and vote for Scott Walker uh, during that recall who didn't support what he did in Act 10, but they were tired of seeing that mob and the protesters everywhere. We are hearing that candidates are hearing at the doors, and we're hearing it in the polls as well, that people are tired of that mob mentality, and they feel like Kavanaugh's family was treated poorly, and uh, they don't want to see that anymore. They just want that to be done. They want people to get along. 
and I think Democrats are going to be punished for that this I, fall. I give John a chance because I'm sure the mob thing for for you, knowing what you've written in the past about this, <laughs> that probably doesn't sit well with you. But, well, uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't think my mom and her friends from Burlington who came up to defend public education with nurses and teachers were a mob. Only one I, spitting on me. I, I that, well, yeah. then that was a bad person, and there are actually they used to say that about the Tea Party folks too, and you know. I, this, this notion of trying to make the other side into some sort of evil force. I mean, if Leah Vukmer wants to keep going down that avenue, I'm sure it'll get her the numbers that, that she's gotten so far. But my counsel on this is that I think that at the end of this campaign, you will be very hard pressed to find somebody who remembers the name of Brett Kavanaugh. I think they will remember uh, a debate about preserving Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, uh, which Frankly, I think in the final stages of the campaign are going to be the central issues, not just at the national level, but even down into the state well, campaign. One more quick question about uh, the governor's race. Uh, Tony Evers is facing a challenge here in terms of spending. Yeah. The Walker campaign has spent a lot of money, or allies of the, mm -hmm. the governor spent a lot of money in this race. I've seen data in some markets outstate where Tony Evers is being outspent two to one. Does that have an impact? Does that, that, at the end of the day, make a difference? You know, he, he might be being outspent on media today. I think that the Democrats are going to catch up by Election Day, quite frankly. You think they're going to catch do. up? But you also have Tom Steyer, who's spending a million dollars trying to organize college students to vote. The You've California got, bill. Uh, yep, mm -hmm. SCIU, you know, the American Federation for Teachers spending money, AFSCME spending money on the ground. There are millions of dollars being spent on the ground, not on the media, trying to help uh, Tony Evers win and the Democrats win in Wisconsin. Spending make a difference, John? Sure. Does. Of course, yeah. that's why they do it. Uh, you know, with all due respect. <laughs> Sometimes you uh, wonder why they do it. You know, <laughs> it, may be, it may be poorly done at times, but there's a reason they yeah. do it. There's even a reason why they do negative ads. Uh, the fact of the matter is that Scott Walker has some very, very effective ads. Um, and not only from his campaign, but from allies. And I think they have had an impact. I think that they, they have hit Tony Ebers very hard. Evers will be back, I think, in the game. As Michelle says, you'll start to close that gap a little bit. And the interesting thing is that this week he put up a new ad where he's talking straight to the camera himself. I think that is really, really smart. The Walker campaign has tried very hard to demonize Tony Evers, to make him into something uh, you know, very scary. Uh, the more they put him up front talking to the camera, and you see this you know, actually pretty likable, pretty appealing guy talking about taking care of schools and health care, um, my sense is that uh, the TV debate will be fine, you know, that TV fight will be fine for Evers. The key, in my opinion, is the extent to which these candidates get off the phones, stop talking to campaign donors, and go out to Wisconsin. This race will be defined by the western part of Wisconsin along the Mississippi River, somewhat to the north, and then somewhat in the northeast. And, and the fact of the matter is that uh, Evers and his people need to spend a lot of time outstate. Let me uh, wrap this up with a, a quick question or two about the, the Senate race. Michelle Litchens, uh, I'm, I'm sure Leah Vukmer would have liked to have seen more help from uh, people in Washington, more help from Mitch McConnell, uh, more financial help, frankly. Right. How badly wounded was she in the primary by that tough primary and a lot of money spent against her. That was a very difficult primary for her. And when you looked at the map out state, that all went for Kevin Nicholson. Mm -hmm. So think about it. After the primary, she didn't just have to go out there and reach out to every voter in the state of Wisconsin. She had to build bridges with the Republicans that were supporting the Nicholson campaign. And that, that still affects the Fox Valley where you talk to folks and since they were heavily invested in Nicholson, you know what, they're taking some time to warm up to Leah Vukmer. So this is, this is really a, a difficult challenge for her. And talk about spending. You know, Tammy Baldwin was up boosting herself on TV. She has millions and millions more than Leah Buchner does. And um, she was out, you know, just being all nice and people should like me. And I think it's just taken a much it's taken a lot longer for Leah Vukmer to try to define herself and introduce herself to voters. You know, those politicians with their, I'm nice, people should like me ads, you'd be amazed how well that does. Uh, look, here's the, the bottom line in our, in our politics here right now. Uh, Leah Vukmer did had a, have a tough primary. There's no question of that. Then she forgot that the primary was over. She went into the debates. She's gone through this campaign, campaigning as if she is trying to rally the Republican base when you know, that base will be rallied enough. She really hasn't generalized her message. It's, it's damaging to her. Number two, she's got Mitch McConnell talking about if they're, you know, going after entitlements, right? Which is Social Security, Medicare, and Medicaid. A terrible message in the late stages of the campaign. And finally, uh, Wisconsin hasn't turned out 
a first-term senator running for a second term since 1938. I think we have a pattern in this state, and it is not going in Leah Boopner's direction. John Nichols with a little history for us. John, thanks very much. Michelle Litch, it's good to have you on the program. Thank you. Appreciate Thank your time you. today. Thank you. Coming up next on Upfront, doing doors in Milwaukee Central City. How's the neighborhood been? The effort to re-engage communities of color and why politicians aren't speaking but listening. Upfront with Mike Goucher, brought to you by the American Transmission Company and the Wisconsin Corn Growers Association.